Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Hopefully you guys are all having a fantastic day. Today's upload is going to be a long range update, outlook, forecast, whatever you want to define it as. It's basically going to be me tr trying to you know, do my best on forecasting the next couple of um, weeks, mainly the next 10 days for the majority of the United States. So this may be a longer video because I know sometimes I leave out like a lot of areas like the West, so I'll try focusing on those areas a little bit more in this video. Um, if you like these type of videos, um, consider subscribing to my channel. You can see this is my channel's MBGC combo, what you're watching right now. I'm at 4,015 subscribers, which is just absolutely insanely ridiculous. I'm so happy, guys. Um, you, you really guys are amazing. And, uh, there's gonna be a button here. I don't because this I'm the owner of the channel, but there's gonna be a button here to subscribe You could click that if this channel suits your needs that is up to you I'm just here reminding you if you want to go ahead feel free. It's there for a reason So uh, I don't know why I am at hour 234. Let's go back to hours. Okay hour six. Yes, let's go back to hour six and Overall right now what we're witnessing is below average temperatures for much of the Midwest and Plains and parts of the Northwestern, um, Eastern, if that makes sense, like Eastern Montana, Eastern Wyoming, basically below average, year, there was huge area, huge area of real estate that was had free, freeze warnings and frost advisories for last night. Um, we actually here in Chicago did not get it frost. We got down to 38 degrees though, so it was pretty chilly. You can see this high, but overall fairly calm weather. N not not a big, st nothing like big. The, the only big event really that's going to be going on is this big storm riding up into California, Arizona, the Southwest, into those areas, and that will bring a lot of moisture for. Um, the rest of the United States. So let's play this out. Actually, I'll zoom. Okay, so this is where the date is. If you're wondering what time this is, this is 18Z Saturday. So I think this is at 2 o'clock Saturday. This is what it's forecasted to be like September 29th, 2018, which is today. We go forward and you can see this high pressure gets kind of kicked out. Some strange showers. Again, nothing concern, concernful of flooding, severe weather. Se severe weather at this point, um, it's almost October. I think Monday is going to be October 1st. So at this point, severe weather is very minimal. It's not going to be a big threat unless you live further in the south. I know I had got it. There may be some severe weather down in the plains here, um, I think this week. So I may need to do a video on that. But you can see snow showers up to the north, mainly still rain. And the other big story, other aside from Hurricane Rosa, or at this point would be a tropical storm um, landfalling into the southwest, is that there could be a good dose of rain for much of the Midwest, and it could actually be just like an atmospheric river of rain basically just going over parts of the plains right here and leaving quite a bit of rain. So I'll show you that. So you could see rain showers going along. This is Tuesday, October 2nd. Pick your location if you live in the Northeast. Some rain showers. Again, this wouldn't be heavy rain. Just some light rain showers. Gloomy days, basically what I'm saying. We could have a lot of gloomy days ahead of us. You could see a lot of moisture in the Southwest and some snow showers and um, showers in the mo mountainous West. Then we have basically this is uh, this is the remnants, basically the moisture from the remnants of Hurricane Rosa kind of make their own little low right here, and this kind of spawns a fairly big system by midweek next week. A lot of rain associated with this. Nothing too powerful in terms of winds. There could be some windy conditions. Obviously, these fall storms are known for being windy, especially across the Great Lakes. They t tend to pick up a lot of. Um, oomph and a lot of energy. So you can see that's a pretty big storm right there. Um, the west, some rain showers, snow showers, obviously in a higher ev elevation. And then we have, this is where it could be starting getting very active. This is now Thursday, October 4th. You could see it's going to be a very <clears throat> active pattern in terms of just rain showers and just systems going by. I mean, we in a ma matter of a week, there was like five or six little systems. That's like this fifth one right there. And then we have another little system passing through. Could produce some rain showers across the Midwest and a lot of the plains. 
southeast mainly dry but really above average because of this high as you just saw it's gonna be kicking up a lot of warm air so this um southeast if you're wondering why the southeast or at least now the next 10 days is gonna be above average i would say even more than the southeast i would say a lot of the east coast will be above average is because there's just this giant high sitting right here and it's steering everything at any cold weather let me try let me draw this out actually this is fairly cool so any um any cold conditions with this high pressure you can see it's bringing it down these cold conditions these um cold temperatures I should say or below average while there's this there's this high pressure that's just sitting right here rotating clockwise and what it's doing is basically steering all these blue um all these blue arrows which mar is marked by the cold temperatures is basically steering them up in a way so th the southeast is basically safe from the cold air if you want to put it that way and safe I mean this isn't going to be um, frost you know yet for the southeast but some chillier conditions I know a lot of people in the southeast want that but I know at the same time a lot of people in the southeast don't want that and then this is October 5th I showed you that we have a big storm and then this is next week Sunday so a week from today or a week from tomorrow I should say we have this fairly big storm and this is where it things could get really interesting we have these two low pressures right here and they're kind of steering in quite a bit of a uh, moisture and they're kind of just making a plume of rain just go across the United States that could lead to some heavy rain you can see that just lasts for a couple of days I mean if you live anywhere in northern Illinois eastern Iowa southern Wisconsin quite a bit of rain I mean look at that that's that's good that's a good dose of rain right there so October may be a fairly wet month for lots of the parts of the Midwest I'll show you a NOAA graphic how they're depicting that in just a minute and afterwards you can see we really start cooling off and um, in terms of average temperature starts cooling off and we could be below average so snow showers are be gonna become a common thing across the north and actually if we go down to the model run at 6z saturday you can see they were just showing some um snow showers really far down south um, i mean southern uh, southern iowa southern wisconsin northwestern wisconsin all these areas we're showing as and look at that, just another system erupting there. So, again, th this is very far out. So, the models tend to be a little bit cooler than average. They tend to kind of overhype the storms when they're this far out. So, I would say that our best bet is 200 hours and under out. So, um, now let's move back to, because uh, I showed you what's going to happen in the Midwest. Let's focus a little bit on the Southwest. Now, you can see another system developing through this, um, the New Mexico area. And that's going to be a fairly, I mean, Southwest. I'm sorry I'm talking this fast, but. The southwest overall will be fairly moist, fairly wet, so definitely the threat for flooding I think is the greatest in the southwest for the next 10 days due to the fact that the terrain there, um, it's parched, the desert soil is just not really willing to absorb that rain that falls so quickly at some points and that could lead to some flash flooding and especially with these big storms that we're having um you can see another system that, driving down into the northwest with quite a bit of snow and rain precip so sooner or later i think we could have our first named winter storm or at least named by the weather channel i know many people don't like that but i am personally fine with that so I showed you the MSLP and precip. Let's quickly go to the total accumulated precipitation. And right now, what we're looking at, again, I was showing you guys, southwest, fairly wet. Um, this doesn't look like a lot of rain, but the southwest doesn't really see a lot of rain in general. This is... You're right, this is starting to get into their wet period. Winter and fall and spring is their wet period. But um, this is still quite a bit of rain if it does fall in one area. And that could definitely lead to flooding. And obviously this... Um, this swath of rain is much greater than here but the terrain is just different here it's um it's more flat the water is more absorbed by the soil it's just not as risky as the, as it is there in the mountains so again like i was talking about this plume of moisture going across america a lot of yellows and reds which is six to around 10 12 maybe inches of rain again this is far out but i would definitely say at this point that the midwest and the east and a good chunk of the United States will be above average in terms of precip. In terms of below average in precip, I probably would say the northwest, but 
I wouldn't even say they're that much below average. They're just around average, maybe slightly below average at the best. But um, it's a fairly interesting pattern. We'll, we There's quite a bit of things to watch. So um, I'd like to now show you the temperatures because the temperatures are really interesting. It's basically going to be a back and forth battle between the two sides of warm air and the cool air. So right now what we're looking at is a fairly below average swath of <clears throat> cooler than average temperatures across the northern plains and I was saying eastern western Montana basically the whole state of Montana and this caused a lot of the freezes and frost warnings and um, warnings and advisories to be posted due to the fact that we're getting this time of the year where this below average temperatures where it's where it's showing those purples could mean below average or below freezing so you can see this sticks around for at least through the day of Saturday and then into Sunday a little bit um, but you can see the warm air is very eager to get back up and the thing is with these big storms like I was showing you we'll have a lot of rainstorms and it's just with these big storms the warm air will have an actual passage to the north so you can see the I mean this is midweek uh, this upcoming week a lot of the United States above average but um, the cold air is just waiting there eagerly it's not giving up it's kind of stored up there and it's just gonna be um, basically sitting there and waiting for its you know its opportunity to come down into the United States so with these big storms as I was saying a lot of warm air can ride up into the United States but it's short-lived, nevertheless. Um, you can see that a lot of Minnesota, this is Wednesday, is above average, but then Thursday, it's below average. So it's just going to be back and forth between these systems. And at the beginning, it seems more like the, um, the, the southeast will be warm and the west will be cool, but then it could switch around and um, the west will be cooler, So or the west will be warmer. So we go through these periods, you can see the southwest is actually fairly below average. I mean, Throughout some periods, it is b above average, and then it's below average, and it's above and below. So I would say mainly the cold air for the first for the first five to ten days, maybe five to eight days. I would rather say um, it's the cold, cooler air is going to be centered across the northwestern, southern United, southwestern parts of the United States. So I would kind of draw it out. Like hopefully you can. Uh, let's do a different color. Let's do it like black, so you can actually see that. And let's make it a little bit thicker. Um, I think it's going to be summer like this. The cold air is going to be summer like that, and the warm air should be summer in this area. So this should be the warm air, and in here should be the uh, should be, sorry, should be the cold air. So, again, this is only for the next five to eight, five to eight days. After that, the southeast ridge kind of breaks down, and we see the cooler air just coming in into the parts of the eastern, northeastern parts of the United States, while the west is in the warm air, or in the warm temperatures. So, um, the west. I would say the main um, assumption is wetter and cooler for now. Same with the northwest and northern parts of the United States. But then the southeast and east is warmer and wetter. But some locations will also be drier depending on where you live because that's how much it varies. So let's go to the Climate Prediction Center 6 to 10 day outlook. As I was showing, you could see um, this is the temperature prob uh, temperature outlook for from October 4th, which is, I'm fairly sure, Thursday, to October 8th, which will be Monday or Tuesday of next, not this upcoming week, but the week afterwards. And like I was showing, above average for much of the southeast, and then below average for parts of the southwest and into the northern plains. I would put the... I would actually put these these uh, bluish bluish colors into California. I think they're being a little bit too conservative on the cold here in the in the southwest. But I think they're doing a very good job here showing the warm temperatures. And as I was showing precipitation probability, a huge chunk of the United States will be wet. I mean, anywhere from California all the way to Tennessee, even Maine. That I mean, you can see it above average. And this color right here is, I think, eighty. 80, no, yes, yeah, 60% or higher of being um, precip, of being above, the, the prop chances of being pre precipitation being above average is 60%, which is fairly high for a 6 to 10 day outlook. So um, now let's move on to the 8 to 14 day outlook. You can see compared to the 6 to 10 day outlook, the cold air makes, does make a little bit more um, nudge down to the south and expands its um, tentacles, its grasps, while the southeast ridge continues to weaken and kind of gets pushed off the coast. Um, that's going to be the probably the pattern, like I was showing with the northwest, northern plains, and the west being cool at first, and then being um, warm or warmer 
while the eastern half of the country is cooler. And precip probability still stays above average for the 8 to 14 day outlook, which extends from October 6th through 12th. So overall, I would say the only region that would, again, be below average, slightly below average, is the uh, northwest. And I would say about 95%, not 90, 85% of the country will be above average in terms of precip. So very active pattern, very interesting pattern, stormy um, it's, it's, it's an interesting pattern. Again, this is fall, so I would expect um, a lot of rain to be falling. However, again, this is calculating in the fact that um, based on average, it's still going to be... So based, take, take a typical fall, it's still going to be more rain than just a typical fall. So if you associate October living in Ohio Valley, if you associate October being very wet and cool well then this year you may be experiencing even wetter conditions but slightly warmer so hopefully this gave you a better insight i know it was a lot of talking a lot of information if you zoned out throughout the video basically what i was saying is that um very interesting pattern very unique lots of things going on the northwest is and the northwest and the northern plains are going to be cold and then shifting further south and southeast throughout the next 14 days so hopefully you enjoyed, hopefully you learned something new. Um, again, consider subscribing to my channel if you have not. Um, it's, a really, it's, it's a really beautiful thing having a YouTube channel and having almost like a family with you guys. So um, this is an awesome thing. Uh, thank you for watching and I'll catch you all guys in the next episode.